That game against Atalanta last night was nothing short of crazy. It was full of nervous tension going into it, full of excitement in the second half, full of absolute in the pits in that first half. And there's been a lot of reaction. And one in particular has caught my eye. And that's Rio Ferdinand and Paul Scholes' chat on BT Sport. What I want to do in this video is take a look at what they both had to say because they, they clashed on their opinion of the game. And something I want to say here is I don't think either of them are wrong. But it's a really interesting conversation. I want you to watch it with me. You let me know what you think about what Rio and Paul both had to say about that game and about that win. Let's get straight into it and let's listen to what Rio Ferdinand and Paul Scholes had to say about that game against Atalanta. But that's the first half and I think you've got to look beyond that. I mean, Scholes, do you remember what it's like when we were in a change room? That first half, yeah, you would, you would address it, but you'd look and focus more on that second half going forward for the game against Liverpool at the weekend. And listen, when no one's sitting here and saying and could sit here and tell the public that the problems are cured. Everything's fine and rosy now. It's not. But you have to grab onto a result like that. Do you? Look, uh, first thing you have to agree with there, completely agree with Rio there, is that nobody's trying to say that Manchester United are back because of that Atalanta game last night. In the same way that Manchester United weren't back after Villarreal, as we saw with the game that followed next, Manchester United aren't back. And no Man United fan is going to be suggesting it. But Rio's taken the positives from the game. And that's where he and Paul... I suppose, have their differing opinions because Rio's focusing on the fact that Man United came from 2-0 down to beat Atalanta 3-2 at Old Trafford and Old Trafford was bouncing. The crowd was behind the team. The crowd probably got behind the team in the second half. Genuinely think it was quite a big factor in that second half because there was boos, deserved boos at halftime, but the Old Trafford crowd got behind the team in that second half. And Rio here is just trying to hold on to the positives from the game. And you know me, I like doing that. So that's where I completely agree with Rio. Let's carry on listening to what he had to say. Ocean that you have in that, you've got to carry that forward to lift the spirit of the change room. You've got to remember that this team were lacking confidence. They've been on a terrible run, um, got dismantled by Leicester at the weekend. So a result like this, no matter how you get it, you take it. And I think you've got to just take the positives from this game. And I think that's what they have to do. I think Oli, um, people were, were questioning, I think he got a bit prickly there about the question about the players working for him. But that was, a, that was something that was being levelled at him from different sections of the fan base, yeah. but also people in the media as well. And today he got the answer that he wanted. Not that Look, and again, I agree with that. Uh, in that first half, I, I, I think I said it before half time, I was like, Solskjaer looks dead and buried here. Uh, if there was no, if, if there wasn't going to be a response after Leicester, then I thought he was going to be dead and buried. In that first half, there was nothing from the players, nothing from anybody really that showed me that they were re they were ready to fight for Solskjaer again, like because Solskjaer has been on the brink so often, not so up there, he has been there quite a few times, but the players have responded. I and I thought that was the case against Leicester, but it felt different. And then the first half there. It was the exact same, if uh, just as bad as Leicester. But then they turned up in that second half. So, and somebody, ah, oh, Sam, they weren't playing for Solskjaer. They were playing for the club. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. That just sounds like you're trying to drive an agenda there. And I, look, and I am not driving any sort of agenda. I'm trying to be as impartial. I'm just covering both sides of it. And that's why we're going to be looking at what Skulls had to say next, not just Rio. That he might have been asking that question himself from the sound of his answer. But you have to say that they gave him a response that I'm sure he'd have been sitting there and praying for before this game. Work it, work hard, uh, a work ethic, uh, a togetherness that yeah. you want to see in a Man United shift. I mean, because we were so bad against Leicester, we needed to go back. That we, Rashford said it in the pre-match press conference, going back to basics. And we're like, mate, you're joking. Look at the team we've got. Ronaldo, Varane, Sancho, Bruno, Pobin. You're talking about basics. Yeah, we shouldn't be talking about that. But after that Leicester game, it's the only place we could have gone. And we went there in the second half eventually, well, after an abysmal first half. Sure. And uh, listen, I'm not for one minute getting carried away sat here and think that the problems are over, but you've got to enjoy that Scolzi, man. You come from 2-0 down at Old... And I've got to say this quickly before we take a look at what Skulls had to say. It, it doesn't matter where you stand on Solskjaer. It doesn't matter where what you think about Manchester United at the moment, where you think our problems are. You have to enjoy that comeback win. They those moments there, man, that's that's football. That's why you've bought your season ticket. That's why you, you get up at 4am sometimes if you're watching all around the world to watch Man United because you want those moments. You don't want the first half, for sure. But you want those moments there. You have to enjoy it. 
And that's where I completely agree with Rio. Paul, he sees it a little bit differently. I think that's being fair. Rio, real, 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 real. Please enjoy it, please. I, I told you, I can imagine it being enjoyable for the fan, for you, obviously. Um, and it was brilliant. Don't get me wrong, coming back from two and that was exactly what we wanted. Remember, we watched Van Gaal teams, we watched Mourinho teams. Boring, boring, drive you fast to sleep, send you to sleep. So this worried was, me for a moment there. So, <laughs> so yeah, you did as well. So two things there. First of all, love that little dig at Jake Humphrey. Second of all, yeah, I do remember Van Hal, and yeah, I do remember Mourinho, and yeah, it is more exciting under Solskjaer. Given there's a lot of uh, a negative excitement, if you want to call it that, that's a random thing I just made up there. But it's not like it was under Van Hal, and it's not like it was under Mourinho. No matter what you say what you what you try and argue it just isn't and skulls there was he had to bite his lip because he definitely didn't want to fucking swear but i'll swear for you skulls that's what we're here for anyway let's hear what skulls had to say to go to that is great but you look at that first remember who you're playing against you're playing against atalanta but they beat them yeah they beat them in the end they, they were they positive. At the end. Yeah, they, they were, were, they were they positive. Beat, and they, and like what Rio said, they, they, they've, got take, they've got to take the positives out of it 100%. But there were negatives. And what you're saying is against the better team. Look, and this is where I'm saying that Rio and Skulls are both correct at the same time. It's just... For, I, 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 before the game against uh, Atalanta, I said on Twitter, I've got pelters for it. And I don't think I deserved any, if I'm being completely honest. I stand by what I said. I said, if you, if you want United to lose, to push a sort of agenda to, uh, towards Solskjaer getting out, then you're not a supporter of Manchester United. Simple as that. But what we're seeing here now, I'm seeing Skulls and Rio both with correct opinions because what they're doing is they're interpreting that win differently. Skulls is focusing on the negatives of the first the first half and, and how that was the biggest problem rather than uh, that... that the size of that problem outshone the scale of the comeback in the second half for Skulls. For Rio, it was the other way around. The, the the scale of that comeback outshone the problems that we saw in the first half. Therefore, he's taking the more positive spin on it. And Skulls is going for the more negative spin. Both of them are correct here. I'm not trying to say that either of them are wrong. And both of these uh, points have to be taken into a sort of a rounded debate on last night. Because we were shit in that first half. Absolutely abysmal. I, as I said, I thought we were dusted in that first half. Second half, we turned it round. But it's really interesting to see the contrasting opinions here that I really think reflects the contrasting opinions that exist inside all of the United's fans right now, which is why the arguments exist. Let's carry on and see what else is being said. They will be exploited, I think. Will? Go on, Ray. You, you, you can only beat what's in front of you as well. That, that Atlanta team... You got to, don't forget that they've been... There's a way of beating teams, teams over the last three years. Yeah, the rest of the way of beating teams. Yeah, they did it a bit. I know that, but you have to remember, that, again, the confidence that this team have had going into this game has been so, so shot. They've been on the floor, almost on their knees, just knees this team. Questioned, everyone pointing the finger. You know what it's like? It's difficult under that slim circumstances. So to come out and go 2-0 down and then come back, the character and personality shown that you've got to grab onto the positives that you can... Like you're talking about character and personality. Like where the hell was that character and personality uh, against Leicester in the 4-2? Where the hell was that character and personality against Villa in the 1-0? Where was that character and personality in the Everton 1-1? I don't need to continue, but I could talk about many other games as well. So Rio's spot on here in saying, yeah, we did see that character and personality. But what United need to do now, and I said it in my match reaction last night, this can't just be the beginning of the cycle again. The boom bust. Solskjaer on the brink. Players turn up. Performance comes in. He gets saved. We play good for a week or two or three or four. And then we go back down again. That can't happen again now. Solskjaer has gone past that point. It has to be just a continuous upward trajectory from now on. Or Solskjaer will be sacked. In my opinion anyway. Let's carry on and get the end of this bit. Take To take you through to the, to the weekend. Because it's a huge game. Like you say. If they perform like they did in the first half. They get dusted off that pitch. But second half. There's something to take into that game surely. Does the fact they've won in that manner make any difference See for the here. weekend? No, so it doesn't make any difference. But that, that first half made a difference. But will it it'd be interesting to see now what it does on Sunday? Will, will he think, will he get carried away with the emotion of that big performance against a lower ranked team and say, right, we'll go for it, we'll do exactly. 
Now, what Skulls is going at here, because if you looked at the formation, if you looked at the style of how Manchester United played in that game, we were effectively playing a 4-2-4. McTominay and Fred extremely isolated in the middle. Bruno just doing what he wanted up front. Um, Rashford up there, Greenwood up there, Ronaldo up there. No space, no link in between. That's why we were so bad in the first half. What happened in the second half? Bruno dropped deeper. I said this in my pre-match uh, build-up show. Bruno needed to link that play up. And in the in the second half, he won man in the match. He got two assists. He was absolutely spectacular. Bruno needs to realise that he's more of a third midfielder than he is a supporting striker. But Paul's not wrong here, man. If we play like that against Liverpool, we're going to get our asses handed to us. So things have to be better. Things have to be different than they were in that first half. And that's what I'm saying here. Rio is correct in what he's saying. Hold on to the positives of that. But at the same time, Scholes is spot on in making sure that nobody forgets about that first half and doesn't get carried up, carried along this wave of emotion. And I also want to take a look at what else Scholes had to say because I thought Scholes was very interesting last night. You still don't feel that was a win worth celebrating? Um, worth celebrating? Um, well, you, you celebrate every win, don't you? I just... The first half really worried me. Uh, as I've said before, look, and I get it, and people are going to say I'm miserable and probably get slagged off by United fans, but that, that's just the way I thought. I, I looked at that game thinking about Liverpool on Sunday. Maybe it's the wrong thing to do, thinking about Manchester City. Because I thought in that in that first half, United were all over the place. They were disjointed. They had the two midfield players play on their own. Now, if you do that against Manchester City or Liverpool, half time, it'll be 3 or 4 now. You, you'll... I, look, I... I don't think Scholes is wrong. And I don't think Scholes is going to get slated by United fans. What I've, what I've seen this week, again, it's, it, it's this This is where the toxicity is coming into it. Scholes was getting slammed. They were pulling up videos of how he's reacted to Louis Van Howe and what he was saying under Van Howe. What, do you reckon Scholes is not doing it now? No, Scholes is saying his fucking opinion. Just like I'm saying my opinion, just like you will say your opinions in the comments here. Scholes is completely and utterly true and correct. What United typically do is actually play well against Liverpool, play well in these bigger games. But yeah, if we do do that against Liverpool, we will get served. David De Gea actually still kept us in that game, that incredible double save. So it could have been 3-1 by the time. We could have been dead and buried in the second half as well. So I don't disagree with the negative, not the negativity, but the the realism, I believe, of Scholes' opinion. Not to just walk away from that 3-2 win, high five and everyone slaps on the arse. Look how good we are. Let's go and have a bottle of champagne. Not at all. There's no celebrations. I mean, there are celebrations after the fact, but it's it has to be a line in the sand win rather than, oh, look, there you go. We've done it. And I think that's kind of what Skulls is trying to intimate, although he's you know, presenting it slightly differently. You'll be out of the game. You're not coming back. And yeah, it's great watching, seeing the excitement and seeing the United way, all the smiles on their face, all the attacking, all the goals, all the shoots and all the crosses. It's brilliant. I know that. But that first half just stuck with me. But when you've only won one... Skulls is really affected by that first half. And I, I'll be honest, so am I. Uh, I. I'm going into that Liverpool game full of trepidation. And for me, the 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 the, diff, the, the big, big difference between the first and the second half was, was the position of Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes really just adopted a, a supporting striker role in that first half. Really close to Ronaldo. Meant, it meant there was no there was nobody there because Fred and McTominay are deeper lying central midfielders. They need someone there to link the midfield to the attack, which Bruno did better than anybody could have in that second half. Man of the match performance, outrageously good in that second half, outrageously poor, I would say, in that first half. So many misplaced passes, but with a player like Bruno who takes risks, he does make those sorts of passes. Let's carry on and see what Skulls, what else Skulls had to say. But yeah, that first half scared the crap out of me when I think about Liverpool. I'll be completely honest in five to win in that manner with with that atmosphere and that reaction I mean look at you know Cristiano when, when you say win in that manner they've come back, come yeah, back to yeah. great great spirit yeah great fighting spirit they conceded still so many chances now if you're playing against quality players there's no way you're winning that game not a chance you're winning that game and now everyone will get a little bit carried away with this euphoria now will he play that way on Sunday against Liverpool it was that brilliant. It was that good. Everyone's smiling. Everyone's happy. Go and do that on Sunday against Liverpool. See what happens. Look, man, I will not disagree with, with anything Skulls is saying. I don't disagree with the thing Skulls said, and I don't disagree with the thing Rio says. That doesn't mean I'm sitting on the fence. It just means that both of them 
are looking at the same subject from two different angles and both of them have extremely valid points that all need to be rounded into a discussion that gets taken into that game against Liverpool. We can't play like that against Liverpool. If we do that, Henderson and Fabinho or whoever plays in midfield for Liverpool will just dominate that midfield, dominate possession. We know that Mane, Firmino and Salah will press from the front. That we're going to get squeezed for space. We're not going to have anybody linking Fred and McTominay to the midfield unless Bruno Fernandes drops deep. Scholes is right there. Scholes, Scholes is... Skulls' message is what we should be really taking from this game, if I'm being completely honest. The 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 Rio's Rio's reaction is 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 obviously more positive. He's focusing on that win, and they're the sort of like, you know, well done. It's, but it, it it's it's a well done, but well done, but let's not fucking ignore that first half. And that's what United need to do going into sun going into Sunday now. Because uh, as I said, we looked dead and buried in that first half, and we turned it around. The players turned up. But I really want to know what you think about what Rio's had to say here and what Scholes has had to say here because I think both of them share really fair opinions, interesting opinions. It's good insight and it's interesting to see the different angles that you can take looking at the same game. And I think that really sums up what Manchester United's fan base is right now. It's not that we're split. It's just that people are sitting at different points along the line and therefore you see the same thing in two different interpretations. And I'm not, and I, in this case, I'm saying Skulls is right and Rio's right. I'll be really interested to know what you think about that in the comments below. If you did enjoy it, welcome to United People's TV. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Take it easy.